Hello, humans of the world. You are now tuned into Relations Podcast, where me and a new co-host, just like you, discuss our relations with ourselves, with each other, and our experiences. Are we ready to break the cycles? You know, the ones that live within our learned behaviors. Have you noticed the decisions you make subconsciously? The ones that lead you right back to where you started? Let's take on the healing journey together. Get on this PJ of unconventional conversations conversations and let's travel all the way through our lineage then let's break the cycles link by link ready let's do this hello 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 welcome to relations hello humans of the world we're back for another amazing episode i want to thank you guys for you know supporting me for joining all these amazing conversations and all the great feedback it's super dope so I really appreciate it. So we're here for another one. Um, today's topic is called Put Yourself Last. And this is about how do we put ourselves back on the priority list for ourselves in front of blood, water, whatever it is. Um, so before we get started, I want to introduce you to my key. IP guest, y'all know that's the best part of this experience. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to Kyle. Kyle, say what up to the humans. Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Happy to be with y'all here today. <laughs> um, you're so formal. The get like say <laughs> what up, people, what up? What's going on? What's up? Oh, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Kyle, I always start every episode about how um we've met. So I'll cue it to you. We've known each other for a very long time. We met in high school. So yes. what's your first recollection of like, experiencing um, me or like seeing you or whatever? Uh, first first recollection of seeing you. High school. We had uh we had mutual friends. So you know we, we hung out sometimes. Um you were great, great under me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was a freshman. Okay. I was a freshman. Oh, yeah. You were so all right. Yeah, so great under me, and um, you know, just stay cool over the years, you know, and that's uh, you know, think you, you're dope. I like what you do with uh with the podcast, and um, I'm glad to be you know still in touch. That's dope. I appreciate you. So I can't wait to talk about this. So before we get started, I want to like kind of define three phrases that we're going to be using just so that we can make sure that we're on the same page. Um, so the first word is priority. Priority is the state of being antecedent in time or of presenting something else as per priority of birth or presence in a place or rank. Family, um, the collective body of persons who live in one house and under one head or manager, a household including parents, children, servants, which is this is according to the Webster's Dictionary of 1828. So apparently they considered their servants part of their family. That's interesting. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the third is friends, um, one who is attached to another by affection, one who entertains of uh, or in yeah entertains for another sentiments of esteem respect affection which leads him to desire his company and to seek to promote his happiness or prosperity that's deep that's a deep definition yeah. of friends that is this <laughs> um so let's isn't it oh no go ahead you got it yeah so to transition right into it, um, we have people we didn't choose in our lives. Those that the uni universe is aligned in your path. Nonetheless, the one many of us neglect is the one that is almost con always consistent, which is oneself. We put our own needs, wants, desires as second, third, even fourth priority to protect and satisfy others. So much so that we fall short and dishonor ourselves. Today, we will talk about how we can put ourselves back on the top priority list and, remi and remain there while we show love and compassion to others. Let's get right into it. So have you ever been taught self-love? Um, I, I guess to a certain degree, you know, um, self-love in, in, in the physical form as far as, okay, like when I was younger, my aunt. My mom, they taught me, got to clean your nails. You got to, you know, you get a pedicure, you do, do, you know, get your feet done, things like that. But um, I don't think uh, actual, from like an emotional standpoint, um, self-love is really, really taught, you know, to black men like that. 
you know. Um, mm. That's 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 my my take on it. I think it's something that that you know some of us end up learning later on in life. You know, when we've had certain relationships and um and we've we kind of discovered ourselves a little bit more emotionally, then you can um you can start you know really focusing on it. Okay, the self love is needed. It's important, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think it's always so ironic, right? Like you come into this world and you're automatically introduced to all these people, right? Like you're in the hospital, you come out and like all these people are like surrounding you, yeah. right? And yeah, the doctor slaps on your butt. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? So it's like your focus is everybody else. But from that moment on, right? It's like, these are these people that you just came to this world with and now you got to focus on them. And I don't think there's many times that I've heard anybody say like, oh, wait, you know, you should care for yourself. You should yeah. love yourself. You should figure out yourself. Although I think that this journey is all about getting back to yourself because they no one teaches us that. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's ironic. So how, what have you noticed that you have fallen short on your priority list? What would be like an, an instance that you felt like that? You, that I have that I've fallen short on putting myself first? Mm -hmm. Okay, um... Definitely in the workplace. <laughs> in the workplace, uh, sometimes you know you end up taking on tasks that you you know it's just, you're kind of stretching yourself thin. You know, um, coaching. You know, you know, you know. I coach. I coach kids, and sometimes you you do so much and you put yourself first. You bend over backwards, and you know these kids give you their ass to kiss sometimes, <laughs> which which is they don't, they don't realize like it's I'm 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 doing. I'm helping you out. I'm helping make your process, your your athletic life, and you know further on, you know your growth as a young man. I'm helping you out, and sometimes they 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 crap on you. You know what I mean? And this is after we put money, we put time, we put energy, you know, into these kids, and and some don't appreciate it. You have the, of course, you have the ones that that do, you know. But um, that's definitely one of those cases where I think um, I've put I've I've, you know put on myself secondary. Yeah, I, I feel like mentors are very undervalued, mm -hmm. um, especially when you are taking care or really attending to the youth. Um, I think now, especially in 2020, when we've seen people be working from home and shifting things like your your personal life and your, your life with, you know, being an educator is all blurred at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah, it's um, it's it's different. It's different, <laughs> and uh, I've I've actually went back into the building, but you know the kids, not all the kids are there. It's still remote, but um, you know we have we have probably about fifteen kids in the building. Um, it's not a lot, you know, but um, it's COVID has definitely definitely changed things. Like I don't think things will ever be the same, honestly. Yeah, I agree. It's gonna take a long, long time for yeah, you to yeah, get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would agree with you work uh, the workplace is one one space I found myself not being a priority and I think it's just overall being like the oldest child so I'm the oldest sibling of three and then I'm the oldest female of like 11 cousins oh. um and so it's it was, yeah it was always like focus on you have to do for them you yes, have yes. to be a good example you have to look out for everybody else um, and so no one said, Melissa, what do you want? What do you like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing. It was, how can you show up for others? So yeah. um, as I got in as an adult, which I think is part of our adulthood is to get back to ourselves and taking time to like put ourselves in our own priorities uh, oh. in the front again. Nah, so I, get I, I wanted to ask you a question, you know, regarding, okay. Um, so, you know, I'm married and that's, that's sometimes, you know, you, you, you put yourself last, you know, and, um, but it's, it's accepted. It's a compromise, you know? So there's sometimes my wife, I want to go, she wants to go to, to brunch. I want to watch the football game. You know what I mean? So those are, those are times, you know, sometimes where I would say, okay, I put myself on the back burner for, for the wife because what she wants to do. And I, I think in relationships, you, you always, you always end up doing that. You know, if, if you care about the person, that is, you know what I mean? Right. Right. I, I do agree. It's a compromise. I'm not married, but I understand that in partnerships, it's important to just do what pleases your partner. And that should automatically happen if you really care about them. Right. Like, it's just like, well, this is what they really want to do. 
So I'll just do it. And it's not that big of a deal. Mm. So what are the signs that you need to create boundaries or distance from someone? Have you ever been in that situation where you're like, okay, this person, there is nothing else I can do Mm. to get through to the fact that I'm putting myself last. So what are the boundaries that you create? I I think uh, in terms of boundaries, okay, when when I notice like um, this relationship is no longer healthy for me in terms of um, emotionally, you know, you're messed up after dealing with this person or this financially, I messed up after dealing with this person. You know what I mean? Those, those are things when it's like, okay, it's time, it's time to step away from this relationship. And, um, and for me, that's, that's like, that's cold. I, I do it cold turkey. I, that's, that's my thing. I, I step away. I isolate. I, I need to get myself out of there. And get my, my my mental right before I could even, you know, deal with that person again. And um, mm. you know, everybody's in different ways, but that that's me. And um, yeah, that's 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 how I do it. Yeah, I you know I've done. I think it all depends on the person. For me, like I've done the cold turkey thing. I've done the the easy my way out thing. <laughs> I've done the, I'm going to sit down and break up with you and have a full-blown conversation about why I'm making this decision. Um, but each time is never easy. It's always like after several attempts of trying to rectify something that just doesn't work for me. Um, and so boundaries is something, I don't know, I think I have a hard time because that's another thing that nobody teaches us how to do. Yeah. Like no one teaches us how to set boundaries. So it's like, how do you tell somebody like, listen, you don't, you don't do it for me no more. Nobody usually, well, that's what we answer like the ghost, the ghost era, right? Like yeah, the ghosting yeah, era. Yeah. Cause everybody just, there's nobody no really like, you know, leave you on scene right. and, all that, and just keep it pushing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Some people just be ghosting, but I think there is levels to, um, to setting boundaries where I can be respectful. Um, so, I looked up um, this random Google on how to tell when it's time to cut someone off. And these are like four points that they said. <laughs> this is a random Google. It's today. funny. It's like a tutorial on how to cut someone off. You know, this is how you do it. Right. Here. Yeah. In case it's hard for you yeah, and you yeah. want to know, here's how to do it. <laughs> so number one, um, if they're detrimental to your life, this perhaps um, is the biggest sign that it's time to cut somebody off. Um, if they aren't there for you when you need them the most, mm-hmm. If they don't aside, they they don't put aside their own feelings for you, and if they don't support you, mm. so that's interesting, right? Like that's deep. So if they're falling into any of these categories, it is time for them to go. So is it so? <laughs> um, it's one of the categories, or if they, if they check all five, I'm sure that means they they out of there. But what if they they're decent in some of the categories? But you know, just a thought. I mean, I don't know. I I would say if they fall into all of these, like that, you should have been let them go. Like that's a you problem, yeah, you right? <laughs> yeah, um, and if there's just one, like for me, I think everybody has their own deal breakers. So for me, mm-hmm. not being supported is really for me, right? So I know that to me, that's like number one. Like if you if you don't support me, then you're being detrimental, and you're falling into all the other ones, right? Okay. Like that makes sense, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so what are some ways we can set boundaries with compassion and love? Like, how do we get out of the ghosting era and go into the era of like communicating effectively? Wow, that was hard. Yeah, that is a hard one because I think you you gotta be you gotta be mentally there to be able to speak to that person, you know. And and I think if I'm not mentally there, then I'm not I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna speak to you. You know, because then I, we're going to end up, it's going to end up a, a dislike. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to leave like that. I don't want it to be a, t- a, a, oh, I hate you thing. You know, so I would, I would rather just remove it. I think we had, if we start having a conversation and this person isn't understanding what I'm saying, or they're still doing what they do that, that they know I dislike, I'm just going to end up getting upset. I'm going to say, F you, and then I'm going to keep, you know what I mean? And, and you, you don't want to leave on that bad note. You know what I mean? So I think, I think it's just, for me, I gotta go. No hard feelings, but I gotta Sometimes. go. Yeah. 
That's something I, that's I think I tried to. That what? I said for the people that can't communicate those feelings and still, you know, then that's that's good, you know. But you know, we all have our thing. We all have our downfalls. Yeah. Well, not for, downfalls, but challenges, right? We're just trying to be better than we were yesterday, I would say, right? Yeah. Um. So I I looked up. So the, there's this writer who who wrote seven ways to set boundaries without being mean. Um. The first one is uh start saying no. So to change your ways, you must. Always start with a small and in the scenario, picking something minor to say no to. This will give you the necessary confidence boost to show you that people can manage without you and that they they will not hold it against you. Mm. So do you have a problem saying no? Not not necessarily. Not all the time. No. Nah. To my wife, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because that that was going yeah, to work against you. Yeah, but um, <laughs> not necessarily. Sometimes I, I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. Sorry, you know. But at, at, at the principal, the principal asks you to do something. Generally, you do it. But yeah, I don't really have a problem saying no. Though. No. Um, the next one here is trust your body instincts. Your mind and body work very closely together to keep you functioning. Trust what it has to say. Ooh, what is your connection with your instincts? Uh, sometimes uh, I believe in that, you know, because you just know when it's a bad situation. You know what I mean? And, and you know, you just don't feel right, like you said, in your mind and in your body. And, and it's... Usually, when you don't trust it, you end up getting screwed, and you're like, you know what? I should have, I should have listened, you know. And then when you do trust, it's like, yo, thank God, you know what I mean? Like I, I did the right thing. And um, like I give you a scenario, <laughs> um, you know, younger, you know, younger days, young and stupid, and um, you get that my boy's about to go do something bad, right? I'm, I'm supposed to be going with him. <laughs> And you just get a feeling like, yo, this this ain't the move, Kyle. Don't do it. So then I'm like, yo, I'm going. I got a basketball game. I lied or something. So these guys go. They get in. They get into whatever they get into. Get arrested. And I was supposed to be with that group, but my mind and my, I was just like, this is not a, it's not a good situation. So I listened and I got up out of there. And I I really believe like um. And I guess it all ties into energy. I guess it all ties into there being a higher being and all that stuff. And um, sometimes they, 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 maybe even your ancestors, they speak to you, you know, and, and uh, you got to listen. Dude, we stubborn sometimes, man. <laughs> we stubborn sometimes. But when, we when I think, I think it uh, definitely works out in our favor. Yeah. Every time I didn't follow my ancestors, I was pissed yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I always lost. <laughs> Um, the, the next one here is let go of what people will think. People will always have an opinion about you. What should be important is not letting every opinion matter. Well, I didn't say I didn't hear the second What part. is your It says, um, people will always have an opinion about you. You should be, it should, you, you should be important is not, no, what should be important is not letting every opinion mm. matter. Facts. Facts. Yeah. So, yeah, everybody, everybody got an opinion that it, especially right now in the social media world, everybody wants to tell you about something that has to do with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they haven't walked a, a, a second in your shoes. Yeah, I mean, right. opinion, if someone doesn't have a direct effect on you um, in terms of, okay, um, are they paying my bills? Or are, they, are, they, are they a link to me getting paid? Or are they, you know... It's something to do with my health. You know what I mean? If, if, you, if you have an opinion, like, it doesn't bother me. You can speak, you can call me whatever you want to call me. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm, you're not worth my, you're not worth me getting back at you because it's, your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm still me. I still, I'm still getting the bills paid. I'm still living my life. I'm still doing whatever I want to do. So why, why should your opinion, why should I go back and forth with you about what you think about me? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it doesn't yeah. matter. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with the fact that I, I it does, I, I do care. Like, I do mm -hmm. care not what anybody thinks about me, but I do care what like 
the close people in my life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very frustrating to me when I am displaying myself to somebody and they choose to see what they want to see. Yeah, true. So, like, for instance, if you know, if you're like very um, open to somebody and you like tell them certain things about yeah. you, but then they choose to like pick at like one random little thing about you, and it's like, bro, you see all the other great qualities yeah, yeah, yeah. about me. Why are you not focused on? Those? No, that's true. Right. Um, so, so I would say that would be like probably the most frustrating. Thing yeah, I mean, um, that's with your loved ones. I mean, I, I didn't include them, but I think that's definitely um, like I care what my mother thinks about me. You know what I mean? I care what my brother thinks about me. I care, you know, your, your family. And um, that, that's because naturally I say immediate family. You want to please them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, especially when they, when you don't, when they don't know you. So, um, so the next one here is stay firm. Don't apologize if you if your answer has to be no. Rather, start off with appreciation and then end the conversation with saying no. So, I mean, as a male, right, probably staying firm is not difficult for you, I would presume. <laughs> that's just what it is yeah i i try to channel that male energy um sometimes other times i just feel bad so i'll like go with like something ambiguous like um i'll see we'll see we'll see what happens <laughs> Because when I when I, so the thing is is as a woman um, in this society, right? When you're firm, you're like seen as a bitch, right? Like it's like oh, you're just being a bitch. You always say no. You're all this. So it's like trying to find my feminine energy in like being firm is like my balance. Um, but you know that's just society. Stuff. It's yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's still a long transition and I definitely feel my ancestors a lot of times when I'm doing these types of things, as much as it might not be the most comfortable thing. I know I don't have to do it just for me. I have to do it for my ancestors or the, or the women that couldn't because that's where the value is. That's where we grow. So, um, so a next one is be clear about what yes means if you don't if you if you know what you want to say yes to it becomes easier to say no so i guess this, this means compromising <laughs> i guess what this is trying to say is, yeah if you if you say like if you say like well i'm willing to do this then you know you'll be like oh well i can't do that but i won't willing to do this um yeah that, me too i like that one too i'm like i never thought about it like that <laughs> Um, and the last one here is implement the ASSA rule. So here's the ASSA rule. Um, alert the individual that you need to talk to them. State your issue by revealing to the person what the problem is and tell them why it's an issue. Three, sell the advantages to set to, to them for acting better towards you. For example, will you seem professional? 
And lastly, agree. Seek agreement for doing things differently in the future. So this is like if you really want to sit down with somebody and like break it down to them. Yeah, you could alert, state, sell, and then agree. That's pretty dope. Me too. So this... Go ahead. Um, so what have we unlearned um, in this season is about not being a priority. I say choosing self as a priority is essential. Our relationships with others are challenging. And I mean, we keep hearing the word boundaries in the last decade as an inclination that is acquired consistently to, in efforts for many of us and is imperative on the road to healing and, cult and cultural evolution. Let's make the phrase self-priority just as impactful as it is. So what are you, what are you, what are you, what have you been on learning in the last, in this last season of your life? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think self-preservation is a big one. I, I self-priority, self-preservation, I think is important just because I think it gets a bad rep. I think that people say, well, if you're putting yourself first, then you're selfish and you're a narcissist and, you know, you're all about yourself. But why, why wouldn't I put myself first? Like, why wouldn't I be the first person that I focus on in my life? mind blown like we all need to be doing that for ourselves it's not a this cold dependency um i don't know toxic learned behavior or habit that was taught to us i don't think it's is the right way like where it's not it doesn't feel good i know that for sure yeah I'll, I'll leave that as like the last question have you been on the opposing side like someone who has cut you off because you weren't good for them in their lives Yeah, that's dope. I so I've been um uh in a situation where a friend 
felt like I wasn't, well, they just said a really mean thing. Like I was a, being a really mean person to them. Like I made them feel not good. I made them feel low. I made them feel all these things, right? And regardless of whether I, my energy made them feel that way, um, I removed myself because I felt like, well, if I'm making you feel so horrible, <laughs> then I need to remove myself from you because I don't want to make anybody feel like that. And I don't really know what I'm doing to make you feel this way. Um, I'm not doing it intentionally, but my energy is going into you. So I'm going to just see my way out. <laughs> they were just saying, you know, like I like I um, am the type of person who's, you know, very private and I make them feel like I'm better than them. And I'm, you know, it was it was like a, it, it seemed like a confidence thing. Um, and whatever I was projecting to her made her feel like her confidence was shaky. And so I didn't want, I mean, I'm not going to dim myself down to make her feel more comfortable. And so I was like, you know what, how about I just see my way to the B side, <laughs> um, and give you your space. But I, but I was able to identify that it wasn't something that I needed to change within myself, but rather that I needed to change our dynamic, right? Because sometimes we take things personally and we think like we're doing something bad but sometimes it's not something you're doing it's just the chemistry of you and the other person is not functioning properly mm. Mm. yeah that um, false false positioning i call that false or incorrect positioning of people in your life <laughs> i just make these shits up <laughs> They're incorrect positioning because, and, and that's like the worst because when you think like you being a friend to somebody and they're not seeing you in that same way, they might not be saying it to you, but they are showing it to you. So when people are showing you who they are, you got to believe them. It's facts. Some things are just, you know, they need to be staying here forever. <laughs> Well, thank you, Kyle, for this conversation. This is super, super dope. I really enjoy be you being here for us having this conversation. It was a, a good time. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Mm, yes, we're getting there. I know it. We're getting close. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I appreciate you. And until next time, later. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe and follow on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube at Relations Podcast via The Diary of MR. M as in Melissa, R as in Rosario. And now the best part, here are the after credits, a message from my co-host. <laughs>